hello guys and welcome back to another video oh my it's been way too long this time i think it's been two months two months without uploading i'm so sorry basically i'm back at college so a lot of time my time has been spent on that but anyway enough with the excuses i'm very sorry in this video i'm going to be showing you how to do an obby reset stage so basically let me show you if you go to stage two of an obby this obby system is from our previous video the obby checkpoints video you must have that already set up before um, watching this video as it's sort of an add-on to that video if that makes sense so anyway if we go to stage two so we see we're at stage number two reset our stage we get sent back to the start this also works for our sip stage system and our data saving system so that means when you rejoin at the stage will automatically be saved but however, if you reset the stage, all that data will obviously still be reset. So basically, it's a complete reset if you press this button. I'm going to show you how to do this all in this video, so make sure to watch until the end. Before we begin though, make sure to like and subscribe, it really helps me out a lot. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do an in-depth analysis of how to write the script itself, and it's basically like functionality. If you um, just want to copy the script, that's no problem. You can just join our Discord server and the script, uh, the final script is just in there. Anyway, let's begin the tutorial. Okay, so we've just popped into our Roblox Studio world here. This is the same Studio world that we used in our previous Obby Checkpoints video. If you haven't checked that out, make sure to check it out. It will be the first link in the description. In the video, we basically discussed uh, the checkpoints folder, so basically all of the checkpoints need to be in the checkpoint folder and we also went over this script. This is the main checkpoint script. Again, this video is going to be sort of an add-on to that video, so make sure you have that already set up. We're just going to be looking at adding the scripts to that system. So the main thing that we're going to be using in our reset stage system is going to be this user interface here, the reset stage button. Now, I've conveniently already got the UI pre-prepared. Uh, that's because we're a scripting channel. We don't really look at UIs that much. Um, I'm not particularly a, a good UI designer, um, as you can probably see by, yeah, it doesn't look great. I'm hoping you guys will be able to make your, your own better one and be able to adapt the code that I make in this video for that. If you don't, or um, just can't be bothered to, then the middle for this, um, the model for this UI will be in the description, you best to get it below. Yeah, so the first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to code this UI. This is going to be the reset button, it's going to need to open this confirmation prompt. We're going to have to code this code button and we're also going to have to code the confirmation button to actually reset the data itself. So that's three scripts already. The button, a button and a button. Okay. So what we need to do first is to code this button. I think it's the easiest one that we can code. So we're going to insert a local script into this text button. And we're going to start by getting the text button itself. And that's just script.parent. As you can see, the script, the script's parent. The next thing we're going to get is the confirmation frame. So this is this. Sorry, not the checkpoints. The confirmation frame. So this. We need to basically change the visibility. We basically need to change the visibility of that to be false or true when you click the button. And as you can see, it's going to be the text button's parent, parent, child. So we need to do text button dot parent dot parent, and it's child. And child's name is confirmation. There. The next thing we need to do is get the, UI, uh, get the user's uh, button click. So basically you only need to um, change the visibility of the confirmation frame when the user actually clicks the button. This is what this function does here. It basically gets the mouse um, click and when the user clicks the button, the code inside this function will be run. And then we're gonna run inside the function. I can spell the code. You change the visibility of the confirmation frame So be the current visibility of the confirmation frame, but knotted, and that basically means the opposite. So if we run this here, oh, 
I can't spell code. Oh wow, I can't spell visible. Oh dear. There we go. Little bit of a hiccup there, because I've retested it. Anyway, so as we're in, as you can see, when we click this, it changes the visibility from true to false, but it basically changes it to the opposite. So that code there works perfectly. The next thing we need to do is code this close button here. That button is actually really easy to code. It's practically the same as this. However, we don't need to do it to the opposite. So we only need it to basically run it. it uh, we only need to change the visibility. We only need to change the visibility to false. So we don't need to have it running both ways. So I basically just copied the code from our previous script hit here. I just copied the code from this button here, plunked it in the close button, and then I'm going to modify it. So the first thing I'm going to do is need to make it do it changes visibility to false, as we're only be changing it to false, and then we also need to change the actual confirmation location because it isn't this anymore. It's the text button's parent. There we go. So we test that now. Perfect. Okay. So we click this button here. And we can also click this button here. The last thing we need to code on the UI bit is the confirm button. So we get inside the frame, go to the confirm button, and insert a local script. And this is the most complicated one. And here we go. So as usual, we need to get the text button. That's just the script's parent. Script, it's parent. Really easy. Next thing again we need is the confirmation frame, as after the user clicks confirm, we want to make it so that it goes in invisible. It's gonna be the text buttons, parents, parents. So two parents. There you go. The next thing we need to do is when you press the button, when you somehow tell the server to reset the player's um, save data. Then we're going to do that with remote events. So we're going to replicate the storage, insert a new remote event. If we just rename, if we just name it reset stage, this is very similar to our SIP stage system we used before. I think we use a remote event in that one. Not particularly sure actually. And then we need to get that remote event in this script. Basically remote events allow us to communicate from client to server or server to client. There we go. So we've now got the reset stage of remote event which is in replicated storage as we got here and then the reset stage thing itself. Again, we're going to have to do the reset stage when the user presses the button. So that's going to be with the mouse button click function again. Again, it's all very one step at a time. The next thing we need to do is change the confirmation frame to be false. So it's the visibility of the confirmation frame to be false. So we only want, um, when the user presses the confirm button, we don't want the user to press it again. So we're going to make it false immediately. The thing we're going to do after that is that we're then going to tell the server to reset the stage, which is done with the fire server event on the remote event. That is that script done. Now the next thing we need to do is we actually need to get uh, the reset stage function on the server and then actually reset the stage data because it, it's, it's not magic. We can't just tell it to. We can't just name a function reset stage and hope that it somehow magically resets the first stage, we have to code it to reset the stage. It's actually really easy to do. So again, the first thing we need to do is get the reset stage remote event on the server scripts. Again, we need to get replicated to storage. And then we need to get the reset stage event. There we go. That's the reset stage event inside the server script. 
the next thing we need to do is actually code it. It's actually really easy to do. Let's just jump down our script here. And then we're going to get the onServer event function. Basically, what this event does, is you remember in our previous script in the confirmation button, we fired the server. So all we're doing is getting, um, when the server is fired, it runs this code here. And we're also given quite conveniently the player who fired it, so we know what player we're resetting the data for. Now all we need to do is change the current stage to be one of the player, and then we also need to change their leader stats value. We can probably just copy the code actually from here, I think. Yeah. We just copy that code. Change just the one, and there we go. So all this does here is gets the player's leader stats, gets the player's stage inside the leader stats, and then changes that stage to one. The next thing we need to do is actually reset the character, so teleport them to their new stage, and we just do this with the new player function. Let's see if it works. Oh, we need to make it so this confirmation message disappears when the player goes in. That's really easy to do. Let's go to the second stage. Let's reset our data. And you can see we teleport to the first stage. That's perfect. Okay, as I said, I need to make it so the confirmation frame is invisible when the player starts out. That's really easy to do. We just change that there. Okay, that's perfect. I'm just coming into our Roblox game to fully test it here. Let's go to stage number two. Press the restage button. Press confirm. And we change to stage number one. That's perfect. Now there are a few bugs. I just noticed that this was slightly off center. Might be able to fix that. However, again, I'm hoping you'll be able to remodel this UI for yourself as it is slightly, just, just, just a, it's not particularly very nice. However, yes, this script works perfectly. Okay, that concludes it to this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hopefully see you guys in the next video. We just did a recent collaboration with Roy Builder. We basically, he was using our checkpoint system, our threat checkpoint system, and couldn't get it working. So we gave him some one-to-one -one device and fixed all his scripts in this game. It's a great video to watch and he has an amazing obby, amazing builds. Give you a lot of inspiration. It did certainly for me. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Scripts, is in the Discord. Scripts are in the Discord server, which are in the description. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.